G'day folks, welcome back to another episode of The Bush TV. In the last episode, I started in Lakola, drove over Mount Skeen on the hunt for Silverwater Hut. We got there, the hut was extremely overgrown, so I decided to camp in a nice little pristine spot at Wren's Flat, right on the Jamison River. In this episode, I continue the camp at Wren's Flat. From there, I head into Mitchell's Flat to check out the gorge. From there, I head up to the old slate mine, where I discover a problem with the 80 series. I fix that problem and head down to Tobacco Flat, where I discover another problem. So sit back and relax, and enjoy the Bush TV. Bright and early, the dogs are howling. Well, there's your 10 litres of water right there on that fire and make sure it's out. So don't bury your fire in soil because it's no good. Always use water and about 10 litres generally does the job. With this lot here, I might go down and get another one because it seems to be a bit hot underneath still. So I'll just pop another one on there to make sure. Well, as you can see, I took advantage of the river, which is just there, and uh, I actually put, what, well, this is 10 litres, so about 20 litres of water on that fire, and it's uh, well and truly flooded, so that saved me about, what, 10 trips with that billy, so thanks to me mate who gave me that when I was in the Buckland Valley, it's come in handy. Time to break camp out of Wren's flat and hit Mitchell's track and check out Mitchell's flat. So bright and early, it's just after 8 o'clock and uh, we're on the track, so off to Mitchell's flat or Mitchell's homestead, we'll go have a look at that and we'll check out the gorge. So this track's definitely pretty good in the wet. Uh, 
um, it's okay when they're dry. But yeah, it uh, can be interesting in the wet. This whole area is a bit like that. Some parts of the Mount Sunday Road. So the lower saddle end, uh, son of a bitch track. It's all sort of that, it's all sort of, you know, rutty. Like I said, even down to the flat, uh, by memory, it's an open area. So if you do get even stuck coming out, you sort of need two vehicles because it's awkward the winch off. So yeah, coming in once it was pretty wet. We sort of just, we came down it. So the other side goes up to an old slate mine, and we're going to go and have a look at that. There's nothing much to look at, but I mean something so we're going we're gonna go past it anyway so we'll go and check it out it's been a few years now since i've been in here so like i said it can get very rutty this uh this track the sign it's changed a lot this used to be like more open unless it's uh down further the open part the original buildings on mitchell's homestead were formed around about 1888 but the main house was built in around about 1936 by the hoskins george and robert hoskin brothers took up what had been Mitchell's selection on the Mitchell River in the early 1900s. The remains of the building was badly damaged by a fire in 1989 and demolished shortly afterwards. All right, this is the spot where I would have camped last night if I couldn't find a spot at Wren's. The old Mitchell's homestead is just over there, so uh, behind me. But this little spot here is nice and secluded. It's a beautiful little spot. Um, if you're gonna, and it's a bit sheltered too, if you're gonna come in here, obviously check weather because track conditions can change, especially around here. It's a pretty clay sort of base and a lot of ruts getting in. Okay, so just down the track here is a nice little underground gorge. Let's go and have a look. Always on the lookout for those Joe Blakes. Okay, so I'm not going to go down underneath. I'll go around the back of it because if something happens while I'm down there, don't even think the emergency beacon would work. You never know, so I'm not going to test it. Uh, so let's go around the back and have a look. So 
So I just come out through the other side now. You can probably get underneath from the other side, but like I said, if something happens down there, it's just too much of a risk. I just have to come through there. Even there, you don't want to slip down, so it wouldn't take much to break an arm or a leg, anything up here. Just check that piece of wood out in there. That's come down with some force to be jammed up under that rock. I'll tell you what, this is really something to check out if you're in the area. Unbelievable. Unreal, I can't get over it. It's beautiful. I'll tell you what, it's pretty hot work, so I might have to cool off a little bit in the river there. Oh, well, I feel so much better after that. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Tell you what guys, I'm looking forward to a fish. So we're gonna get out of this gorge now and uh, head up to the slate mine and uh, have a look at that. Tonight's camp, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna have a crack at fly fishing hopefully, if there's a nice spot on the river. See how we go. Bit of a shame we even get these poo tickets out here in the gorge. Come on guys, bloody hell. These poo tickets, I'll tell you. Tell you what, it's a dusty old trip, this one. Nah, it's not a frothy. It's too early. Some of you might say never. But I do. It's about 10.30, so it took about five minutes. Not even that walk, so to get to this side of that gorge. And then, obviously, if you've got to climb through, it takes a bit longer. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty easy walk into there. You wouldn't even, some people wouldn't even know it's there. So, it's like I said, it's worth having a crack at if you're in this area, most definitely. Oh, I needed that. All right, it's time to get out of here and get up to that slate mine, and we'll check that out. Okay, I've just discovered a problem under my car. I just inspected it and there's a bit of an oil leak happening. All right, so it's the cap or cover on the diff. Um, I just pulled out the 12 or 12 mil and they're actually, these little nuts that are on there, very tight. 
So I'm nipping them up a bit, but I'll wipe it off, nip them up. I don't know why it's come loose, and hopefully it doesn't leak anymore. Well, these things happen. So anyway, at least I can fix the problem. Hopefully I have anyway. It's um, stopped the leak. So it's the first time I've noticed it. I didn't notice it back at the camp. I always have a little bit of a look around at the car. Um, but those little bolts, they weren't very tight. So I'm not going to mention who uh, worked on the diff. A local mob that worked on that diff not that long ago. So yeah. Uh, paste to maybe check these things, but you can't check every nut and bolt in the car. So just paste to have a look, especially at camp. Always check underneath. Like I seen the oil, I'm like, right, that's a bit odd. And I smelt it. It's not engine oil, so I'm like, well, you can see where it's coming out from the diff. Anyways, we'll see what happens. It is what it is. So I might check it later on at the camp. I don't have a big hard drive today. I can take it out of front wheel so I can just run at the rear as well. So there's no much stress on it. There's still oil in it. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. <laughs> now I'm filthy dirty everywhere. Even the back, like, I've actually, I'm filthy. So I might have to change all this in a minute. And when I get down to the river today where I'm going to camp, I'm going to have to wash it. So here's what it is. Let's hit the track. All right, quick change of the shirt. And, uh... That's part of why they sheds that one. And we're off. So just checking because I didn't leave any tools here. And I'll just fix that leak. What I'll do is I'll get down the track a bit. And um, I'll have another look at it. So hopefully nothing comes out. And uh, we'll be right. So because I don't have any diff oil. So yeah, I don't think it lost a lot. What I'm going to do, because I'm at the slate mine here. Just drive back just down there. I, um, I stopped just down at the bottom for a bit probably 20 minutes or so so i'll go back to that spot and just have a look at the ground if there's none there then it's only just happened here so uh, there's none on the underneath the underbody it's not spread out through the whole car underneath so hasn't been doing it for a, like a long time generally if it leaks it'll spread it out everywhere right so trip now continue down mitchell's track and i'm going to end up passing tobacco flat passing fry's hut hitting the halka track where it meets or starts at Brooks Road at Sheepyard. We're going to check out Tunnel Bend. So we're going to go and have a look at that. Now it's about midday, so I am pushing for a bit of time. I've still got the wood on the roof rack up there from Mount Skeen. That's up there behind me. Uh, that was pretty handy that there was plenty of wood. It's okay as well. So there's nothing really come loose up there. Everything looks pretty good. But that's okay. So, yeah quick inspection and we hit the track so let's go all right well let's go I'll head down i'll have a look at that spot to see if there's any oil on the track and how much is there because obviously i was there for about 20 minutes so i was only here for about five minutes before i had a look at it and noticed it so let's go down and check it out and uh, see what's down there So I just come down. This is where I was. I was around here somewhere. So I'll just have a quick look at the track. Yes, there's some oil here. So not a lot though, just a little bit. 
Okay, so it was leaking here. So it means I just got to keep an eye on it. I just came down that part of the slate mine over there. I just got to have a look underneath it again and check it. I don't think it's going to be a problem now. <clears throat> It looks all right. I mean, I didn't drive far, but I think it's going to be okay. All right, just for the record, this is Steiner's Road or Steiner's Road or whatever it is. It comes out of uh, where the Mitchell Homestead is to the slate mine. Now I'm heading right down Halker Hills track. So and that goes to Tobacco Flat, uh, Fry's Hut, ends up at Sheepyard Flat, where the Brooks Road starts, and we head up to... Well, I'm going to try and look for Tunnel Bend and then obviously I want to get to 8 Mile Gap where I've got a bit of service so I can touch base with a couple of people. So uh, yeah, that's it. The road back there, it's very, very easy. So it's more of a more of a bulldust road really, like there's a lot of dust. So even in the wet, that there, no issue, no issue at all. Coming down to Mitchell's might be a bit of a problem if you've got a camper trailer, so... But I think you'd be okay, just getting out the other side might be a bit iffy as well, so yeah. Let's go, how clear hills track to my right. Okay, and then I'll let this thing cool down a bit before I even cross that river. I mean, I came down that track in high range, I was on the brakes a fair bit. Um, I generally don't do that, I generally will put it into like second low down there, just to keep off the brakes. Uh, but I know they're hot, so I'm going to wait. I might just get myself a bit of a drink. And I uh, should get the fly rod out, shouldn't I? I should have a bit of a fish here. Tell you what, there's no one here. It's absolutely pristine just over there. It wasn't so close to this road. Oh, track. I'd camp there. So yeah, we'll let the 80 cool down a bit and then we'll cross that river and head back out that way. Well, it's not my lucky day. I've just checked. This diff is not leaking. Nothing. But there's another leak. Oh, I've got a leaky power steering pump. Um, I don't know where it's leaking from. It's not coming out of one of the inlet hoses. But it's leaking. Like a back seal off it or something. That's power steering fluid. Oh my god. So, I don't know what I'm going to do right now. Um, we have a problem. So, yeah, this one, I can't fix it. I don't know how bad it is. Seems to be coming out of the back of the pump or something like that. I don't know how, I can't pull it down here. It's impossible. I have power steering fluid, but I don't know how far that's gonna get me. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to pull the pin now. I'm not far from Mansfield. I'm a long way from where I come from. Uh, this trip might have to change. I might keep going to do what I've got to do through Binderee up there. Keep an eye on that. And... The other option would be to go over King Billy instead of the son of a bitch track and all that and head home and get it fixed. Cut my trip short. I'm sweating. But it's leaking like quite a bit. So, yeah, but the diff ain't leaking. It's just the power steering. So, I'll give it a wipe, I'll see, and then I'll assess it a little bit more up the track. It's still got fluid in it. So, I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway. These things happen, like, you do come away, these things happen, so. 
Um, the old girl does a lot of work in the bush, you know, so, but you, like I said, you can't just check every bolt on things. I just don't know where it's coming from. That's, that's why I'm stumped at. Yeah, it's like, you can see the leak there on the chassis. It's leaking. I'm going to keep going. Oh, I am going to keep going for a bit. I'll see what happens. Let's get up the track a bit and get to 8 mile gap. I don't think I'll worry about tunnel bend today. At least I can assess the situation a little bit better there. And um, I'll work it out from there. I've got service from there as well. If it's leaking too much, I'm just going to have to... I can go over the bluff range. And back home. So... From 8 mile gap, that's straight across the top. So... Yeah, I'll see. I'm at Sheep Yard Flat, so like I said, it's a dusty old trip. I'm going to get underneath and give that a wipe. And it's coming out real good. Alright, so what I'm going to do is ring my mate and get him to buy some power steering fluid for me. And then I reckon I'll keep going. Well, now I've come across everything in the bush. That's a steamroller. This past Tunnel Bend, it's like a 50 metre walk or something, it's nothing major. Uh, I'm not going to go and do that today, I'm going to make a phone call and get this power steering fluid, so we're doing that. And I should be okay to just continue, as long as I've got enough fluid. Uh, the lost, lost power steering one's in the snow. Um, it was a bit of a struggle to drive, but you know, you can still do it, it's just a bit of a struggle sometimes. Anyway, let's keep going. It's a beautiful drive up here on the Brooks Road. The Halcombe River is just below me. It's beautiful. Well, guys, sometimes, you know, you've just got to get out and have a look. Because um, some of the views up here are absolutely spectacular. Just check out Mount Edley Stoney in the background. I walked up that with my four-year-old son with the, with the bushy that comes with me. And we, uh, we took turns in piggybacking him most of the way down, actually. So, But, um, yeah, he walked it. So, yeah. We're on our way now to 16-mile Jeep track. I just stopped at 8-mile Gap. Uh, the roads are very, very easy. Like, there's nothing here. It's very... I've seen a Getz. One of those little high on I think it is a Getz. <laughs> whatever it's called. Up at the car park to walk up that bluff a few years ago. And they came into Bluff Hut, and uh, on the way out, started to snow. I was like, well, they're going to have a bit of a hard time getting the gets out of here. So anyways, yeah, this is a pretty easy going road as well. Um, so yeah, there's no issue. 16 mile Jeep track. We'll check it out. I think it should be okay. Have a look at Pikes Flat. There's another spot just after Pikes on the left on the Jamison River or Bindaree. And that's the plan. I still have an oil leak, so it's a power steering leak. So I just contacted my mate. I just had a bit to eat up there. Uh, I've already got some power steering fluid. It's sitting on the passenger side floor. Uh, he's going to buy some more, and I reckon I can get this trip done. I still have a slight diff drip from the housing, so... Uh, look, it's going to be okay. I'll get, I'll do this trip, get it home, and uh, chuck it up on a hoist and get this, get this thing fixed. Because, yeah, it's just one of those things. So I need, I'll probably another power steering pump, and I'm not sure about the diff yet. If I can get the plate off, clean it out, and then regasket, do it up again. That's it. So, hopefully, nothing else crops up like. <laughs> And you get that in the bush, anyway, we're okay. That's the main thing.
Well, eight hours in the saddle, and I'm at Bindari Hut. Oh, I'll tell you what. And there's no one here. I've ran into a couple of people coming down 16 mile spur track who watch the channel. So shout out to you because you're going to, I didn't catch your names, but you're going to see this. Um, and they let me know there's no one in Pikes Flat. Uh, there's no one in Bindari, which is here, because I would have camped maybe at Pikes Flat or just after Pikes in between here and there. There's a little spot down on the left on the, on the river there. So it's the Haukwa River. We're at Bindari Hut. I'll have a quick look here. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. And there's another little spot that I know about down there. It's pretty good. But I will go and have a quick look just down there, the other direction. Because I've already got me firewood. All I need is a, a good spot. Uh, the river, I don't know what the river's like at the moment, so yeah. Um, fishing wise, we'll see what happens. Let's have a look at Bindari Hut. Uh, this is the first time I've been here since they've rebuilt the chimney. The chimney used to be like a cobblestone chimney, and they've rebuilt that. Anyways, here it is Bindari Hut. Bindari Hut, built in this location around 1914. The hut was built with a vertical slab format. In 1937, Bindari Hut was built or rebuilt by Fred Fry, also a forestry officer and a builder of Fry's Hut and many more in the area. Well, Bindari Hut. Right, let's hit the track and sort of try and get a camp spot. Uh, got chicken stir fry tonight, so looking forward to that. I've already pre cut the chicken at home in the capskin. Uh, I've got some broccolini to go in there, a bit of garlic, so should be pretty good. I'm just going to cook it up and sit back. Get a fire going, a couple of frosts, and enjoy the night. Okay, so that end there, just a dead end, it's changed a lot. I've camped here a long time ago, back in the 90s, probably 94 or something like that. Uh, we'll go to the other end. So, yeah, down there there's just nothing, so. First thing is first, after eight hours in that saddle, I need a beer. Well, they're all boys. After that bumpy little ride down 16 mile spur Jeep track, whatever it's called. So you know what, it's starting to rain a little bit, so uh, they did predict a bit of a shower the next couple of days. So on this tonight, I'm going to roll out my awning. This spot has changed, like, dramatically. You used to be able to drive up into the end there, and uh, there was no bridge. Well, it might have been there, but then further up, there was another river crossing up there. You could go down, <coughs> and um, it was more secluded. It went further in, and then the track sort of turned to, like, no-go zone without a gate. It was real good. You could just camp right on the river. And obviously, you know, it is what it is these days. So they've changed it around. This is a pretty good spot. So look, there's no one here. There's a couple of vehicles there. They're obviously walking. So it doesn't matter. They're not camping here. And I've got a bit of firewood still left there. I've got some firewood on the roof rack. Um, yeah. 
so I can't go wrong really. I'll, I'll use that tonight on the roof rack and uh, tomorrow I'll get more firewood up near Lake Cobbler. So this is where the Cobbler track is there. There should be some around. So yeah. Anyway, I just want to sit down maybe for 10 minutes <laughs> and uh, have this and enjoy that. It's well deserved. That brings this episode to the end. Join me in the next episode as I continue camping right there on the Hauka River and cook up a nice stir fry and the next day check out Bindere Falls and head up Monument Track and have a look at Craig's Hut. From there I'm meeting up with a friend of mine who's coming in from the Whitfield end and we're going to meet at Lake Cobbler. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching The Bush TV.